Hello, this will be the very first developer reacts type of video on this channel. And we're going to find out what Martin Hus has to say about comparing JavaScript frameworks part one templates. In this blog series, I will compare the following JavaScript frameworks, Vue.js, React, Angular and Svelte. In part one, the focus will be on comparing JavaScript frameworks template languages. The template language of a JavaScript framework is used to define the HTML of the application website. You can say that the main reason any of the JavaScript frameworks exist is the following, to make creating dynamic piece of HTML easier. So the template language, it is a rather important part of a framework. The template languages differ greatly. The question is, are they different enough? My qualifications. I'm working on a project called UI Loose. It is a headless component library written in JavaScript, which has bindings to React, Angular, Svelte, and Vue. And as such, I'm in position to have experienced them all. I firsthand seen their strength and weakness, and I thought it would be fun and informative to share them. Out of transparency, I'd like to point out that I provide courses in React. So out of all frameworks discussed, I feel like I know React best. Second thing is that I've also worked for about a year on a large Angular 2 application. The statement resonates really well with me since I've been working with React applications for maybe five years. And I also happen to work for a year on quite big Angular 11 at the time, or maybe Angular 9 to Angular 11 application for about a year. So. Um, yeah, I can really resonate with that. Defining components. Let's get started. All frameworks work with a component-based model. A component can be seen as a custom HTML tag element, which builds on top of pre-existing HTML element or other components. Let's take a look at how to define components and focus on the overall structure first. Where do you put your HTML templates, CSS, and JavaScript logic? Let's look at various Hello World components. First, React. So here we see React functional component. Okay. Da, da, da. And now it's an Angular component. I would say I, uh, in our application, even the smallest almost one line components, we would never write like that because Angular is very opinionated about how to write components. And the whole point of using Angular is always to sort of like have very opinionated approach doing things. So in our case, we always created things through like every component would always be three files at least, which would be HTML, CSS and JavaScript file. So you would never like, I doubt that you would even do it like that. And it also kind of looks a bit ugly, but on the other hand, this is what kind of I dislike about Angular, that this way, when you put things in the decorator, in the components decorator, it looks kind of ugly. But when you put like one liners into like three separate files, it, it feels like an overkill. So that's why like eh. developer experience for Angular in my case is kind of eh. so so. Now for Svelte makes reasonable and finally view. So as we can see, Vue and Svelte has the closest in terms of template languages. And I also feel like both, both Svelte and Vue, they sort of like provide you with a better Angular experience. Like they, they, they much closer in my opinion to, towards Angular than they are towards React. Vue and Svelte both convey on an idea of putting everything in a single file and using a compiler to sort things out. I'll admit this approach of putting everything in a single file was a bit off putting first at first. Now that I've used it for some time, I find it actually works quite well. Angular in turns. Yeah. Regarding this, what I would say is that it comes with a cost that kind of opinionated developer experience cost that for, let's say, in case of React, you can define multiple components per file. You could argue whether it's a good practice or a bad practice, but sometimes it makes sense to define like smaller components in the same file as the one you, you're gonna like literally export 
to be used elsewhere. But in case of Svelte and Vue, you are literally stuck into possibility to define only a single component per file, which could become a bit daunting. It's not a huge deal, but it's deal for some developers. Angular interns split. Angular interns splits everything up into multiple files. It is also possible to define the templates, the template in line, but for larger components, this is not often done. The result is that Angular projects have lots of files, yes. Angular feels like it is most verbose of out of all frameworks, totally agree. There are a lot of concepts flying around comparing to the other three, to the other three. Also, Angular makes me feel like I'm writing Java and not JavaScript due to its heavy use of classes and decorators. I totally relate to that because when five years back, I was trying to dip my toes into modern like web, de web development, I, my friend who was experienced at the time, he basically said that, hey, you have two options to try. You can try Angular and you can try, or you can try React. React is kind of like strange and different, but since I was doing back in the days, a lot of MVVM, which was, um, or like a WPF with MVVM, which is, uh, which was like a Microsoft way of developing desktop applications with using model view, view model type of a pattern. Uh, he believed that Angular will feel very naturally for me because it has certain similarities in that regard, which he was not wrong, but I also love this functional style. And so React resonated really, really well in my heart. React's template language, GSX, allows you to write XML inside of JavaScript through a precompiled step. For the React, for me, React feels the most like I'm writing JavaScript, even with JSX in the mix. I totally agree with that statement. React is literally, uh, I'd say like the least non-JavaScript framework out of them all, in my opinion. Like even with JSX, JSX is just a fancier way. Like you can always write create dot, you can always use this react create element functions, but nobody does it because it's just like, like, like it's uncomfortable to use it this way. So GSX is not a big deal for me. And I feel like react is definitely the closest to the JavaScript among them all. And least introducing some kind of custom template language within the framework. CSS wise react is the odd man out. It does not have any CSS support out of the box and require other a bundler or a CSS in JS library, does it? You can use, you still can use classes with, uh, you still can use CSS files and you can use class names instead of class. It's the only thing because there is like conflict between, like a little bit of a conflict there, but like uh, I, I cannot really agree with that statement. CSS in JS is just one of the options and not necessarily the best. In contrast, Vue, Svelte and Angular, the CSS can be automatically scoped to only the component. This prevents your component CSS from bleeding out the rest of the website applications. Yeah, sure. Maybe I miss something, maybe, but like React is always tied with some kind of bundler. So you would either use create React app that uses Webpack or you would use Vit. So either way, support of CSS, I think also comes out of the box. So I don't really agree with that statement. Interpolation. In the examples above, each framework renders a message variable that contains the string hello world. The act of replacing variables in templates with the actual content is called interpolation. For interpolation, there are two schools of thought, single or double curly braces. Svelte and React uses single quote, single curly brackets, and Angular and Vue uses double curly brackets, yeah. The camps are split evenly. React and Svelte use singly, single curly braces, and Angular and Vue use the double curly braces. The difference here are really superficial. You might prefer one or the other, but one is not better than the other. It gets more interesting when you decide to bind the attributes. Take a look at how you bind an alt attribute of an image tag to a variable. This is Svelte in React. And uh, this is Svelte with shorthand, view, view with a shorthand and Angular. Okay. Here you can see that view makes an interesting choice. Every dynamic attribute is prefixed by colon. 
Without a colon, it would be treated as a regular HTML attribute without any binding. It gets even more interesting when you decide to write interpolated attributes. The syntax highlighting has been disabled. Okay. Angular and Svelte here feels like they have the least amount of noise, in my opinion. They look the more, the most elegant. Well, I can. I can agree with that. This is because they allow for interpolation inside of attribute strings. View feels like the most heavy of the three due to the colon and quotes and backticks. In React and Svelte, each time you open a curly brace pair lets you, lets you can write a JavaScript expression. So inside React, we must create a template literal expression backticks so we can write a dynamic string, which looks quite ugly in my opinion. One of the features I'd like to see in React and Vue is that they allow this. One of the features I'd like to see, okay. But I guess this is, even though it kind of, maybe not most beautiful one in, in, in case of React, it's the thing that actually makes it, when I said that in my opinion, it's the closest to the JavaScript. Because this is the JavaScript syntax. You when you open the curly brackets, you are in the JavaScript land so you write on the JavaScript rules. So, because otherwise, the moment you leave that land, you start to introducing template language that deviates more and more and more from the JavaScript, which could be good, could be bad, but I guess it again, matter of preference. Or well, simply interpolate inside of strings like Angular as well do. Mm -hmm. It would make the templates in React and Vue so much less noisy. It would be interesting to see what happens with React 19 compiler. Maybe they will allow to do that. Now for the final boss of interpolation, let's create a dynamic area label attribute. Svelte and React, okay, just JavaScript template literal. View, doo -doo -doo. like straight out of the box. I don't really see like difference, like Angular becomes super ugly. Here is Svelte, React and Vue do not surprise us. There is no difference between setting alt attribute or area label attribute. But what's happening in Angular? The thing about Angular is that it always tries to do the correct thing, even though it results in ugly code. There will be a recurring theme throughout the blog post. Technically speaking, there are differences, differences DOM.js properties and HTML attributes. HTML attributes initialize DOM properties and so Angular reasons. In Angular, the only role of HTML attribute is to initialize element and directive state. In other words, you should use the special curly brackets in Angular terms, uh, in Angular terms attribute binding Syntax for properties. The distinction feels a bit silly and this always makes me doubt if I'm using the correct syntax. Another thing to note is that we must now call a function, in our case get label, since you cannot use interpolation when using an attribute binding. I understand that what Angular is trying to do is the right thing, but it just feels so wrong to me. Properties attributes. Regular plain old HTML elements can have attributes, for example, source attribute on an image tag. JavaScript framework also supports creating attributes on your own components. Let's create a simple component called greeter, which takes a name attribute and simply greets the provided name. Let's start with svelte, yes. So we need to export a variable from the script tag and then we can use it inside view more or less does the same, but the syntax is a lot more cumbersome in my opinion. That's why I guess I would prefer Svelte over Vue personally. Like it does roughly the same with less amount of syntax to my taste. Now for Angular, yeah, like, like literally, I doubt that in a serious project you would see a lot of components like this because just like the, the, the template is literally like almost like hidden inside this like, like yeah, I don't know. It's, it doesn't look good. I finally react. Boom, just JSX syntax. In Vue and Svelte, in Vue and Svelte use the idea of compiler extensively, but there is a major differences, difference. Whereas Vue create new constructs in the defined props macro, Svelte opts to change what existing JavaScript syntax means. To me, Svelte's hijacking existing JavaScript syntax like this feels wrong. It is kind of a bit unexpected and it forces me to always make a mental note that I'm looking at Svelte JavaScript dialect and not pure JavaScript. This is very nice statement, Svelte JavaScript dialect. I would agree with that, but I think this is what makes Svelte very nice to me at least. So I don't, to me it doesn't feel wrong, but it's interesting thought. I'm not the only one with this complaint. 
As a response to this flaw, the creators of Svelte are going to introduce a new API. It is called Runes. And in this post called Introducing Runes, you can read all about it. If you know React, Runes will look a lot like React hooks. I know Vue, Runes will look a lot like Vue composables. Angular is the only one of the four that is the only one of the four that does not use the term props and instead call it input. I think this is simply because React popularized the term and the rest followed. Using components. We have seen how to define components. Let's now, let's use them now. Components show up in the HTML in all frameworks as regular HTML elements, but most frameworks start their components with capital letters. Only Angular is an outliner here. Angular does this in order to stay close to the custom elements, aka web component spec. The other frameworks choose prefer a capital letter, so they are instantly recognizable as being React View Svelte component. There is also another reason for the capital letter. Custom elements, web components must always start with a lower case letter according to the spec. So by preferring a capitalized name, collisions are avoided. Vue actually allows both to be used at the same time, but prefers that you use Pascal case for the reasons listed above. Let's change the scenario slightly. What if the name was not hard coded, but a variable instead, and we want the greeting to change whenever the variable changes. It's the same as with attribute. Here we see an interesting split. Svelte and React do the same thing, but Vue goes in another direction. In Vue, all bindings of JavaScript variable must be prefixed with a colon to denote an attribute binding. Angular lets you create bindings by surrounding the name of the attribute with square brackets. What you start to see here is an interesting split. Angular and Vue tend to want to expand HTML further with their template syntax staying closer to HTML. This is apparent in the choice to include double quotes around attributes in all documentations, even though in both Vue and Angular, the quotes, double quotes are actually optional. Conditional rendering. Every template language needs a way to render different HTML based on certain conditions. In the following examples, we either render a login or logout button based on whether or not a user object is defined. Let's look at two Angular examples first, the old and new syntax from 2024. I think next up Vue, they use custom attributes, basically. React again stays close to JavaScript. You sort of like go into JavaScript land, then you go into the JSX kind of land and back and forth. And Svelte has custom template language. Let's start with an observation about React. React does not really have a template language. I agree. Instead, it allows to write JavaScript expressions in between two curly braces. The downside to React approach is that only expressions are allowed and no statements, meaning no if statements or for loops, etc., etc. This is why the ternary expression must be used because it is an expression. The upside to React is that you do not need to learn a new template language and instead rely on JavaScript itself, which is great if you know JavaScript, but perhaps a bit daunting if you do not. But I mean, like this is I agree, <laughs> this is ridiculous. You should not write web applications if you don't know JavaScript. I mean, <laughs> that would be strange. So please learn JavaScript if you don't know. Svelte and React have been in lockstep in both interpolation and props, but here Svelte and React part ways. Svelte opts for using template language reminiscent of Twig, ERB, and others. One thing to note about Svelte here is that I'm always tipping up over the colon in the colon else, I keep forgetting it or I prefix it with a sharp instead. In this regard, I find Angular new syntax a little more consistent. What was the, oh yeah, I agree. What I found most interesting here though, is the comparison between the old Angular syntax and Vue. Vue and Angular have, have these things called directives. A directive looks like an HTML attribute, but with special meaning within the template syntax. In our example, ng4, and view if view else are the directives that conditionally renders things. Mm -hmm. The benefits of directives is that it makes everything look like HTML, but the other benefit is that you can send it down the wire. View is particularly known for easy integration with server side languages. The PHP framework Laravel has embraced view for this exact reason. Okay, I didn't know that. But why then is Angular abandoning directives? The reason I think is that the syntax can also be a bit noisy. 
It is not always easy to identify parts of the template syntax or quickly see relationships such as with v if v else. Also, directives do not lend themselves to indentation very much. Indentation in if statements make them easier to read and to determine what the branches actually are. If I had to choose between Angular directives or view directives, I would choose view. Angular insistence of prefixing in directives with ng makes it look uglier than view v prefix, in my opinion. I guess it's the same. But I guess it's the same, but yeah, I can agree that this one is looks a bit more HTML y, and this looks a bit less HTML y. So current Angular looks like Vue, but modern Angular will look more like Svelte. These recent changes in Angular are referred by the community as the Angular Renaissance. Now I want to take a look at how to write multiple conditions in the example we want to show different things based on the H. Again, let's look at the React first. All right, you can write like that, sure. But I doubt that I would not comment on the PR which would contain this thing. It, it looks kind of ugly. Next up, Svelte. Yeah, sure. I see it also has like lots of like, what I don't like about Svelte template in language is that it has this like, 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 there's so much to learn here that how to write it. Here use sharp, here use colon, here use forward slash. This is new Angular and this is old Angular. Yeah, let's close off with view. Here React sticks out like a sore thumb as the nested ternary expressions look very foreign. I'm pretty used to looking at nested ternaries as an experienced React developer, but as some teaching React courses, this is where a lot of students start scratching their hats. In React, the, when there are multiple ternary expressions, the advice is to refactor them out as separate functions or components. I agree. You should, you should not have these multiple ternary expressions. Refactor them for sure, always. In contrast, I find the new Angular and Svelte versions very aesthetically pleasing to look at. Yeah, this is, I'm not sure about Swell, but I'm not sure about Swell, but yeah, it's okay. This is due to the natural, natural indentation nesting the blocks have. The old Angular version is also unique. It requires two, two, two. this expression for the you and child path. This is because I wanted to avoid using an else. Old Angular does not support an else, but it's also, but it is so vile it has to be seen in order for you to believe it. Okay, it is no wonder the Angular team wanted to improve the template language. The old way of doing if else statements in Angular is utterly confusing. The view variant improves on Angular by having an v else if, but still the lack of natural indentation makes less visible. Yes. Lists and loops. In our application pages is very common. In our applications pages, it is. In our applications pages, it is very common to lists and loops. In our application pages, it is very common to loop over collections, arrays, to show them. For example, looping over a list of persons and rendering their names. Take a look at React first. This time view is second. So v4 person persons, key okay, person name, okay. And svelte is third. We will do angular last, both old and new syntax. ng4, yes. Mm -hmm. First, let's explain the key track by you see in the examples. This allows the frameworks to keep better track of the items in the list. They make the code more performant because the frameworks can now with laser precision update the DOM when the order of the list changes or when the, an item of the list itself changes. In React, I always been annoyed at the noise a map makes. It has an arrow and boatloads of curly braces this makes them somewhat hard to read and write. Angular and G4 approach is an absolute train wreck with a weird lat and always bizarre star in G. Stranger still is the track by which must point to a method in the component and cannot be inlined. The win gained by the new four syntax for sure. The second Angular version uses four is great. The only critique I have is the, is the use of off instead of in, which I feel is more natural. The reason for using off is because JavaScript uses off as well. Yes, that's what I was thinking is that because they want to be as close, they want to be close to the JavaScript syntax because off allows you to iterate over the values and in allows you to iterate over the keys in the object in JavaScript. Now for Svelte, I find Svelte choice here does not jive me. Now for Svelte. 
I find the Svelte, I find Svelte's choice here does not jive me, jive with me for these two reasons. Four instead of each would have been more clear to me. Perhaps the hypothetical four could then use a person in persons, like in view. I do not like the way the key is denoted between the brackets. I like the angular track better. Finally, view with a V4, I find quite nice. I also like the way the semicolon key is an attribute on the child. This way, no special syntax inside of the V4 is needed. Events handling. Next, I want to take a look at how the various template languages in the frameworks handle dealing with events such as click, mouse over and drag and drop. Let's focus on the on click event as I think it is most common. Also ignore reactivity for now as I want to focus on this in the second part of the series. View is this at click, it's like inline, angular, react, just sure, just event function. Okay. Well, again, it's just a function. As you can see, all four frameworks differ greatly from each other in the way events work from inside of the templates. I honestly do not have any favorites here. View is special. It allows mutation directly from inside of the template. Angular only supports mutation where via equal and not uh, plus equal or minus equal, etc., etc. In both Vue and Angular, the way to get access to the event is to use the event special template variable. In Svelte and React, you must provide a function in order for events to work. These functions are then called with the first parameter being the event. React also sets itself apart. It is the only framework where you do not get the actual event that occurred. Instead, you get a so-called synthetic event. According to React, this is to fix browser inconsistencies, but I suspect this is not quite as necessary as it once was. I hope this word on the React API can be removed in the future. Another aspect of events is handling modifier keys in the predefined and preventing default browser behavior. Yeah. So shift out, prevent, click prevent, control prevent, control prevent once, prevent default, prevent default. Out. out of all frameworks, view provides the most event, the most event modifiers, so you never have leave the template language. Angular only provides the key modifiers, whereas Svelte only gives you event modifiers, which is interesting as you might expect them to just give you both. React is missing because it does not provide these shortcuts. Instead, you must handle these use, use cases in JavaScript, TypeScript yourself. I think the idea of React here is that JavaScript already supports all of this. Why add them to JSX? For the same reason, no looping syntax exists. I'm torn about this. On one hand, in Vue, you get all the goodies at the cost of more complicated template language. React, on the other hand, keeps things simple, but at the cost of writing more JavaScript. Class and style. Another thing I want to compare is how the frameworks deal with setting conditional CSS classes and style attributes. React uses class name with expressions. In React, there are two things to notice. First is that the attribute is called class name instead of class. The reason for this is because JSX sides with JavaScript and not HTML. I personally have always been annoyed by the JSX does this. It makes copying HTML a chore. Yeah, I can agree with that. Second thing about React is that it does not support dynamic CSS classes out of the box. In the example above, the class names comes from the class names library. Again, this is a common refrain in React. It only wants to do the bare minimum. The benefits is that React gives you a choice. The downside is that you now have a choice. Do I use CLS X or class names? Do I even care? Do I want to care? I guess out of these two, I haven't checked but for a while, but from what I recall, CLSX is just smaller footprint than the class names and it does the same thing. So I would use CLSX in my projects. Next up is Angular. Yeah, Angular has this ng class thingy. I love the fact that Angular gives you three ways of setting CSS classes, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The last variant is incredibly readable for when you have multiple CSS classes that do not exclude each other, sure thing but I guess I like Svelte in this regard, to be honest. 
Svelte you up. Taking a page from English playbook, Svelte also supports that they can set the classes separately. Power move. Svelte does not support sending an object, but I think this is a deliberate choice I find. And I find that setting an object creates noise. Finally, for view. View has this, okay, following the directive syntax. Given view's extremely feature rich template syntax, I was surprised that it does not support setting CSS classes separately like Angular and Svelte. But you can send them through the object apparently. So I think, I think it's fine. In this aspect, I think Angular is the winner here. As for style, let's take a look at view first. Note that an example, the color is a variable. So view has style, okay, uh, past object. View only supports giving style an object. In that object, you can either use the CSS or JS name for the property you want to style. Angular is up next. You have ng style, style background color, style blah, 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 da, da, da. Angular supports multiple ways of setting the style, including setting styles uh, one property at a time, which I like. The last variant is not documented anywhere, and I suspect this is because it relies on string interpolation, which is flaky for this purpose. Alster, style, background color, da, da, da. important, works but not promoted, documented. Okay, Svelte again does not support setting style via an object like it does for classes, but I prefer setting it separately anyway. A nice feature is that you can also make style CSS important. Svelte and Angular also allow string interpolation, but it is not documented promoted. Last and least React. Hmm. React only supports one way of setting styles via an object which follows the JavaScript convention with the keys. Again, I'm really missing the ability to set styles separately. It is such a nice feature to have. I honestly do not miss style feature like I would heavily advise never use styles if you can like it's it just it just like bad inline styling could give you the perception that you can develop fast at certain moment in time but then you like you doomed because you hide those styles very different like, like very deeply inside your components it's like no do not use styles find another way there are plenty of other ways to use Slotting. The last aspect I want to take a look at is the ability to slot child content onto a custom component. Let's start with a simple example in which there is only one slotted element, a simple card component. So we have a card component and then card and then a tune. You put a child. Okay. Now it's view turn, template, two, 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 div class card slot. Aha, uh -huh, you need to be Explicit about this. Okay, the React uses children and this one uses slot. Yes. The Svelte version looks very much like the view version. Okay. The Angular version is up next. G content. I remember that guy. Not a big fan. Svelte and view look so similar. The only difference is that template element. I like that there is also no JavaScript needed to at all to make this work. Also nice the use of HTML slot element, which was created for this purpose. It stays very close to the spirit of HTML. In React, the content between a custom component is placed in a special prop called children, which you can then render to project the content in a specific place. Generally speaking, you can, of course, like maybe, maybe, me, yeah, it does talk about that. Let's not talk about it. Uh, children, in Angular, you use a custom element called ng content, which is in hindsight should have perhaps even been slot as well. I want to touch on something here. Sometimes a thing terminology exists in HTML, but the frameworks use something different, such as in this case, slot versus children slash ng content. I think one explanation for this is that sometimes the frameworks named it before the equivalent in HTML existed. I guess for creators of frameworks, you then have a choice. Keep using the old name and keep things stable or rename them and create legacy code. Write migration docs, support post syntaxes, etc., etc. It must be a difficult choice. I agree. AI in all the four frameworks can achieve this task with minimal minimum lines of code. I do not think one approach here is definitely better than all in all. Sorry, it's all in all. It's not AI. <laughs> do, do, do. Next, I want to demonstrate or yeah. Next, I want to demonstrate how to create a card component that has a slot for the content header and footer. The content is required, but the header and footer are optional. Let's start with React again. We have four properties, three properties, sorry, that we have three properties that accept the components. Two, two, two. 
okay? In React all props attributes can be GSX. So in the React model, you simply add more named props and render them. To make them conditional, wrap them with around a ternary expression and render null to make React rendering nothing if they are not provided. In React, using children feels natural, but other render props do not. When using the card, the header and footer are defined before the content. This runs contrary to a more natural order, header, content, and then footer. As you see below, only React suffers from this problem. There are two ways around this in React. One is providing children as a prop in props instead. This way you can determine the order yourself. The second is renaming children to say content and use content as a prop. Yeah. Okay. Next up, view. So slots can have names and then we can refer by those names. When rendering multiple slots, you, you now have to use HTML template tag and give them a so-called ref via the sharp symbol to, the name, to name them. This way a view knows where to project the template inside of the component. The order of the template therefore does not matter. You can use any order you want. You can use dollar slots variable to get access to all slots in combination with v if, if you then check if the slots is filled or empty. Next up, Swelt, slot header, slot header. You can, before Svelte and view were twins separated at birth for a single slot use case, now they have grown apart. Svelte uses HTML's own slot attribute instead of the more common, of the more common sharp symbol. The dollar dollar slot is a bit magical, but welcome as it makes the optional slotting quite easy without any need for JavaScript. Let's discuss Angular next and watch as it completely goes off the rails. I'm showing the complete code needed here as I found the Angular documentation here lacking. I hope someone finds the complete code useful. Yeah, ng template outlet. Oh, yes. Okay. I don't even want to read that. If you only looked at usage, the code is reasonable. It looks a lot like the view approach but the amount of code that needed needs to be written just to get this to work is staggering. Plus the terminology you need to understand, content child, template ref, directive, ng template outlet, ng container. It is just too much work. Angular, Renaissance, do your magic. Conclusion. The difference between the four frameworks based on the template languages are very superficial. They all support all use cases, is, so there, there is not something you can build only with Vue, but not in React, etc, etc. Here are some musings about the frameworks in no particular order. On Angular. If the Angular Renaissance had not happened, Angular would be dead last to me. I've worked at a company that used to work with Angular 1 and we saw Angular 2 and we ran for the hills. So consider me pleasantly surprised at all the improvements. No more ng4, no more custom module system, we are a standalone component, etc, etc. I still feel that Angular is a little too heavy. There is no, there is so much Java-esque terminology. Also the use of classes feels very heavy compared to React function and Svelte and Vue, special file compiler approach. I have read that the Angular team wants to tackle the component authoring experience and I'm curious as to what they come up with. On React. As a long time React developer, I'm looking at some of the other frameworks with a bit of envy. I really like the way Svelte and Angular let you set CSS classes conditionally. I also miss a way quickly handle shift alt and prevent defaults on events. And for God's sake, let me write class instead of class names. Still, there is a lot to like. React incons inconsistence do not really have much of a template language, means I can use my existing JavaScript skills. Also, the way props are just arguments to a function that always felt right to me. So my framework of choice is still React. Still is due to inertia. I just have the most experience with it and I know it well. If I started learning front end now, I, it would be between Svelte and React. When runes land in the future, oh boy. On Svelte, have a nice template language and I'm growing really fond of having a single file that includes JS, CSS and HTML. Also the way the styles are compiled is great. Plus the tooling that tells you CSS selector is not used. I do find some of Svelte hijacking of existing JavaScript syntax questionable. Export meaning something very different, for example. 
when we're using Svelte, feels like I'm having in I'm writing in another language that targets the browser, meaning I always have to thread lightly whenever I write JavaScript in Svelte. Luckily, Runes is set to fix this. Now, if they could only make the each word more like my brain works. On view. View is a bit strange. It has objectively a very good template language. I would not mind to work on a project that uses view at all. I just do not like directives very much. For some reason, my brain reads over them too easily. Also, the mental model of directives confuses me. I do not find it apparent what happens when you combine multiple directives on one element, what happens when you run v if and in combination with v4, for example. Not the precedents even change from version 2 to version 3. Oh, all and all directives are not my cup of tea, but I know plenty of people that absolutely love them as well. Plus, view is undeniably easy to integrate with an existing backend. I've also said the same about Svelte, but I'm really digging combining HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in one file and having the compiler sorted out. If you take away one thing from this blog post, let it be this. In the template aspect, it all comes down to your personal tastes. Stay tuned for the next post in this series. Really, really great overview. So I think it's a very good article. I will, leave a, I will leave a link to the article down below. Generally speaking, when I hear about the new frameworks, when they appear, they start to say that because React is just simply the most popular of them in terms of open position in the, like, across the market, I would say that everyone feels like they should contest the React. And reality is that somehow everyone every time says that React is not just JavaScript. It's like it's something else. But in truth, React is the only framework among them all that is the pure JavaScript without any kind of extra stuff except the JSX. But JSX is just like even JSX falls clearly into that normal kind of it's sort of like when you use TypeScript, right? TypeScript is not JavaScript, but it's just like JavaScript with types that requires transpilation. So JSX requires transpilation. And again, you don't have to use, you don't have to use JSX. It's just so much more convenient to use it that there is no reason not to use it. And this is the only, like, it is the only thing that is kind of unconventional. So to me, if you have a very solid JavaScript understanding, using React would be the easiest probably, except that you would need to like understand maybe a little bit how React rendering works. So I clearly know there are like lots of people will disagree with me saying that, oh, Svelte is the closest because like this is pure JavaScript, but Svelte is clearly not necessarily bad, but it, but it comes with its own templating language that you need to learn how to do it in Svelte. And also, what I like about React and less like about all other frameworks is that React is the only one that gives you the most amount of choice. Like you can define multiple components per file. You can, you can change your application whenever you want to whatever you feel like. While other, like other frameworks restrict you in one way or another. Like they restrict you either to have one component per file, the other, like even worse in terms of Angular, because as I said, like I never seen in the production level application that people would use the like put put stuff in the like in this decorator thingy because it kind of more convenient, it, it, it kind of more convenient and more standardized to to put them into separate files, but at the same time. And it also feels kind of like unnatural to, to put it because it's just strings. And whenever you put strings into like, like these JavaScript files, you always need some kind of support of tools. For example, when you use Tailwind, it's very nice when you have a plugin to your Visual Studio Code or whatever the uh, IDE you use in order to like help you to put the syntax or highlight the syntax. Same goes when you use styled components, stuff like that. So to me, if we look at what is the like closest to JavaScript, it's by no means, it's absolutely React is the winner. If I want to learn something new and I'm like tired of React, I guess Svelte is the most interesting personally for me. But 
at the same time, Svelte is the least represented on the current market. But according to the recent studies, but either way, whenever you understand the frameworks and like whenever you understand one framework, you kind of get to understand all other frameworks as well. The only thing you need to know after that is just like, what is the specific syntax about them that makes them different? And syntax is not hard to learn. Hope you enjoyed this video and check out for more.